Hi, I'm Layla Salvade. Welcome to the Lifestyle Interview Series. Today, I'm so happy to introduce Co-Im to you. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Happy to be here, thank you. <laughs> She's an author, a lifestyle wellness expert guide, and is always looking for her next story. So, um, I would love to hear more about your story and just dive right in there, because we spoke over the phone a little bit, and it was so beautiful to hear your story, and I would love to share that with our audience. Yeah, I, I appreciate you um, listening, first of all. Um, so I guess, kind of, we start from the beginning. Yeah. And um, I grew up on a very isolated island in the Pacific Ocean. And I think I was always feeling a little disconnected, a little far away, and I wanted to, to feel more um, fulfilled. So it, it started with a lot of exploration through books and images and ideas. And um, we're at this point now where um, I get to kind of take those ideas and bring it to my everyday life here in New York City. Amazing. So what was the island called that you grew up on? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Guam. Um, it's an American territory. Okay. And it's very diverse. So it was very nice to grow up there. Um, I was exposed to a lot of different cultures and foods and um, I am the daughter of immigrants, so um, I learned a lot of different things growing up. And one of the things was, you know, to kind of um, see and accept people and situations as they are. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a little bit difficult when there are modern stresses um, or stereotypes to our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we we try to see through that every day. Yeah. And when did you guys come to the states? Uh, when I was three years old. Wow. How was that like? Um, you know, I don't remember life before that. Wow, so okay. it was um, interesting growing up and seeing, you know, my dad go to work every day, but, but not knowing at, to what lengths he was working. Mm -hmm. So he worked very hard, and my mom doesn't speak English, so it was a lot of um, assimilation of language and culture for the entire family. Mm -hmm. um, overall, you know, it was nice to um, kind of embody that, American dream of you know every year it gets better mm -hmm. and for me education played a huge role in that in empowering myself and um, learning to speak and learning to um, navigate the world kind of sometimes on my own mm -hmm. um, if my dad or mom can help me with math or English then you know, just kind of learn on your own and um, yeah <laughs> so you taught yourself so much it seems like yeah, um, I guess I'm more independent mm -hmm. than I give myself credit for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a natural inclination for, you know, people that grow up in different places and then grow up in a multicultural environment. Um, you kind of learn how to be receptive and learn. Yeah, um, it's a great opportunity, yeah. a, a door that opens, yeah. you know, when your world kind of widens that way. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say was the moment that sparked um, your light? At what point did that happen, do you feel like? Yeah, I think um, for a while as a young adult out of college, you're coming out of the bubble and um, you're trying to figure out, again, like new situations, new things, new moves um, in personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. And so I was at this point where I felt like I was grasping on the career ladder without really feeling good about it. Mm. And I was in a relationship where I had um, blinders on and I didn't realize I wasn't feeling good about it. So that call all came to a head. And um, it, was a, it wasn't a clear moment, but it was definitely a defining moment. Mm -hmm. And when one relationship fell apart, then it kind of asked me to question everything else. Um, so I admittedly went to like a darker place mm -hmm. in my mind and my heart. And uh, through, I returned to my practice of yoga as a form of therapy and connection and um, even going on a retreat as uh, an escape, but also, you know, a, a journey mm -hmm. um, back to who I was out of a relationship. Um, and from there, you know, because it's given me so much, and also going to um, church, back to masses that I grew up with mm -hmm. on, on Guam, mm -hmm. that um, really brought things kind of full circle when I completed my 
uh, teacher training, and I've continued to kept uh, continue to keep learning mm -hmm. and, and try to apply myself and help others in whatever that they are going through. Um, because you know, I can keep all this knowledge to myself, but what's what's the point in exactly. that? Exactly. That's so beautiful. Yeah, when we go through those difficult times in life, and then we learn and grow, and then sharing it with our extended friends and tribe, that's the most beautiful thing we could do, I feel like. In what way are you now sharing your light with your tribe and community? Um, after getting my certification in yoga, um, I take all that knowledge and that kind of self-experience and um, I pour it out on, on the mat or the studio or the room every time I get the opportunity and the honor to teach other people. And at least for that hour, they can feel hopefully a little bit lighter, hopefully to reconnect with some sense of breath and body and being. Um, and hopefully leading by example. I mean, I'm a human just like you and me, everyone else, so we all have our moments, mm -hmm. but um, you know, being nice to not just the, the community and the tribe that so, we're so intricately and intimately involved with, but also to you know, the strangers and um, the even rest lending, of our human family. Exactly, and yeah. lending you know, a beautiful smile like yours. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, maybe that person, we don't know what they're going through and just giving them kind of a sign mm -hmm. of um, you know, like, I see you, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we're acting as mirrors in that sense, shining the light back at the other person. Yeah. Amazing. Um, you've also been, um, you've worked in so many different ways and facets. Explain that as well a little bit. Yeah. How that journey came about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's definitely not linear. Yeah, it's, it never uh, is. It's zigzag around. But, you know, we all end up exactly mm -hmm. where we're supposed to. And mm -hmm. today, for me, it's on this couch. Yeah. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've always wanted to be in the creative field mm -hmm. somehow, and that led me through um, traditional medium of news media. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, you know, we, we had to learn to pivot. You know, if the opportunity that we think we want is not offered to us, then uh, we pivot. So I, it, it was a great way for me to get back to travel and writing, which mm -hmm. is why I first entered the business. Mm -hmm. Um, so I explored and I wrote and I made videos and um, from there, you know, I was able to work on a few different projects for, um, in a branded marketing way and that's where I am now. Um, but I try to keep a fuller perspective with different balancing mechanisms so that includes, you know, not being so tied to one thing mm -hmm. and maybe teaching or volunteering and that's kind of how I feel sustained. Mm. What would you say was one of your darkest moments that helped you realize the light again? Um, I want to say that light, you don't see that light right away in mm -hmm. those dark spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm trying to think of a an example. Um, well, even in that moment, you know, where you didn't see it, but just that moment that was the catalyst to then take you on a journey. Because absolutely, we don't see the light at first, you know, but it's this call within us that just propels us forward because we don't want to give up. Yeah. Um, the retreat that I went on, the yoga retreat in, in India, um, it was a dark night. And I was sleeping alone in a small, kind of simple hut mm -hmm. right by the ocean. And one day we all decided to um, go skinny dipping, which I'd never done before, right? Mm -hmm. It's out of my comfort mm -hmm. zone. Um, but I felt safe in that space. So I went with the group into the waves. And I did it. And it, it felt freeing. It felt like even in the darkness of the Indian Ocean that and I felt like a little star. Mm. And I could start to see things turn or feel differently. Um, and, and that was, um, you know, a memory that, that I'll keep for a long time, which I don't like repeat a lot. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, um, I think, getting yourself out of your comfort zone or having your perspective turned, mm -hmm. even in a physical, literal way, mm -hmm. um, can help, um, you know, shift, shift your view on the life 
that is in front of you and the life that you see for yourself. Mm -hmm. The vision. Yeah. First off, thank you for sharing that. That was so beautiful. And it's funny because, or not funny, but beautiful, that you're in night and this dark, ocean, vast ocean, yet you see this, you have this experience that is just so light filling. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm, you know, naturally kind of like a night or very early morning person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the daylight kind of overwhelms me. So I think it was appropriate that something like that happened in that time frame. Would you consider yourself highly sensitive in that sense? In what way? If light is overbearing for you almost, you know, it's... Um, I think people that wake up super early or are night bearers, they're usually highly creative and highly sensitive and it's during, it's those hours, it's those magic hours that the world is asleep. So you've got more energy to yourself in a sense. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of very sensitive and creative people um, function in that same manner. Yeah, I think, you know, there's so much going on during the day. Mm -hmm. It can feel like a lot of noise or clutter. Exactly. Um, so I am more in tune with, in that solitude. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of, um, quiet mm -hmm. yeah. your own space yeah oh wow so where were you born I was born in Korea okay um, my grandfather and my father paved waved paved ways for us to get to Guam which mm -hmm. is an American territory mm -hmm. um, so I grew up with McDonald's Kmart Nickelodeon um, and also with you know the melting pot of the other cultures mm -hmm. um, of like Southeast Asia and um, you know, Girl Scouts and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to college in Philadelphia. So it was just me and a couple boxes and, you know, the faith and belief that, like, this was for me. Um, I can do this and I wanted to do it. There was, mm. like, absolutely no culture shock. Um, really? Because I just wanted to, to assimilate mm. and, um, you know, be a part of this new chapter mm -hmm. in, a, in a really engaged way. Wow. That's so brave of you to just leap in faith towards your dream. Yeah, I mean, when you're young, I think, you know, you, you don't see it as, uh, like, risk or uh, fear. It's mm -hmm. kind of um, either determination mm -hmm. or, um, I don't know, like, I, I think naive, but in a, in a good way, mm -hmm. right? Like, keep, keeping like a positive, mm -hmm. like not thinking like, oh, what if I get um, shot in West Philadelphia? Or what if I um, miss my parents so much? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of keeping that youthful mm -hmm. um, energy, that non-questioning part away from you. It's like indomitable faith. Yeah. Who would you contribute your light to? Um, I'm a very religious person and I, um, take great pride in that. Mm -hmm. So I would give the shine, the light up back towards um, God and my faith. And I wasn't a particularly um, devout Catholic growing up, mm -hmm. um, but the church and, and the people and the community kind of turned into this solace mm -hmm. and this place of um, safety, sanctuary, hope. And every time that I go, I feel um, not just grounded, but also lifted. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would give it back to all the, shine it back to all the people who are, who have kind of seen me through the journey, mm -hmm. um, through the eyes of God. And, um, you know, it's not really like, what you can you take from the religion, but what how can you contribute to this world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can you, I mean, that's light ultimately, right? It's like the greatest, biggest, most powerful energy um, that's how I see it, I guess, and um, and so how can you then shine that light into the world? Yeah, yeah, and I think, um, you know, I, I, I love the way that, you know, you're framing the interviews, and, um, and I think each person finds his or her own way, mm -hmm. um, whether it's like a small scale or a bigger kind of project. Um, even in like your everyday interaction or it can be um, you know a large-scale message 
So it, it's it's nice that you know there's I feel like there's more movement and encouragement to do that to find your personal style mm -hmm. to to share the light and to share your light um, and have that affect people. That's pretty. It's amazing. I mean, it's really magical that that happens. Mm -hmm. You know that that kind of kinetic spark between people. It's it's it's. Um, really beautiful it can it can change somebody's life or it can just brighten their day for a minute exactly I would love to ask you what how would you describe a light style what does that mean to you I think it's marrying your unique self and the light you bring to yourself and others with um, the holistic everyday behavior and outlook I love that. Thank you. And um, moving forward, how are you? How? What is your? What is? What lights you up the most right now that you're? Um, that we can share with our audience, and um, that you would love to share with us. Um, I'm really drawn to to people and relationships. I think are super important. And so, um, what lights me up right now are different. Um, opportunities, doors of opportunity that open to, um, you know, lead meditation or yoga, but also kind of um, continuing to cultivate the goodness in my personal relationship. So it all comes full circle, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's a romantic relationship or a familial or a friendship, um, really, um, you know, feeding and nurturing that in back and forth both ways. And it just, it's, it's, we forget like how important that is to mm -hmm. feel like there's somebody next to you and that you're not alone and and um, you can do things. Very true. Do you ever foresee doing something back home in Guam or Korea, like taking that your light back there? I hadn't considered it, so that's a um, good option to think about. I think my home is here mm. now. It's um, it's with the folks that I. Um, live and breathe with, mm -hmm. but I, I'd be open to that. Um, it's just a matter of seeing where, which direction the, the light takes you. Where life takes you. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you sharing your light with us. And um, thank you. Thank you for letting me share the couch with you. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a cozy couch. It needs to be shared. Yes. <laughs>you guys like this episode of the lifestyle interview series please share it with your friends and family and don't forget to hit subscribe